Racing is often used as a metaphor when describing an election, with terms like the race for the White House used to describe US presidential elections. However, it might be quite accurate to call the election of 1983 a race in which both sides of parliament were moving as quickly as possible to position themselves to have the best chance of winning. Things were not looking too good for Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser. Despite comfortably winning the 1980 election, Fraser's approval continued to be pathetically low. The economic woes that had seen the coalition deliver budget deficits upon budget deficits didn't seem to be improving. Worse yet, Fraser now had to deal with Don Chip and his fellow Democrats who held the balance of power in the Senate. These restrictions on Fraser's ability to govern clashed with his inflexible governing style. Fraser's governing style had already seen several coalition ministers resign over disagreements. However, in April 1981, Fraser would have to deal with the resignation of Andrew Peacock, Minister for Industrial Relations. Peacock would accuse Fraser of being a maniac determined to get his own way, which ironically was the same phrase Fraser had used when resigning from Gorton's ministry. Fraser was forced to call a party meeting in which Peacock would challenge him for the job of Prime Minister. Peacock would lose with only 27 votes to Fraser's 54. However, the results showed a sizable amount of disunity in the party. Along with the leadership spill, Fraser's deputy Philip Lynch would be forced to resign due to poor health. Lynch would be replaced by John Howard, the man who had previously taken over Lynch's role as treasurer. Lynch would tragically die only two years later in 1984. Meanwhile, the Labour Party was also struggling with leadership challenges. Hayden was seen as a dull leader who would not be able to win the next election. This led the recently elected Bob Hawke and his supporters to challenge Hayden in the second leadership spill of 1982. Hayden won by a much closer margin than what Fraser had won by, 42 to 37. Despite the loss, Hawke continued to gain support in the Labour ranks, and it seemed only a matter of time before he took over. This led Fraser to consider the possibility of calling another early election before the popular Hawke became the leader of the Labour Party. Due to a back injury, Fraser would be unable to call an election in 1982. However, he would get an early election prediction in the form of the 1982 Flinders by-election to replace Lynch. Despite being tipped to lose, the coalition would surprise pundits by winning. This surprise upset gave Fraser the confidence that he could win the 1983 election. Meanwhile in the Labour Party, the upset would be the final nail in the coffin for Hayden's leadership. By 1983, even Hayden's closest supporters believed that Hawke had the better shot at winning the upcoming election. In January that year, seven-day Prime Minister Frank Ford would pass away at the age of 92. He would be awarded a state funeral which would be attended by Hayden and other Labour Party members. At the funeral, Hayden would be approached by his close friend, John Button, who informed Hayden that he believed it was in Labour's best interest to elect Hawke as leader. Realising that he no longer had party confidence, Hayden would resign as leader the same day. Unknown to Hayden, on the exact same day, Fraser had just arranged to visit Government House to call a double dissolution election. The reason for such election was due to friction in the Senate between the Coalition and the Australian Democrats. Fraser had hoped that if he called an early election, he could force the Labour Party to run with the unpopular Hayden, thus ensuring his best chance of winning. Fraser arrived at Government House around midday but was unable to talk to the Governor-General, Sunin and Stefan, due to him having lunch with the Polish Ambassador. Thus, Fraser would be forced to wait while that same afternoon Hayden announced his resignation and Hawke was elected unopposed as the 12th leader of the Labour Party. Hayden did not go quietly, claiming that a drover's dog could lead the Labour Party to victory. Fraser would announce the election for the 5th of March 1983 at 5pm, but by this point it was too late and he would now be facing the popular Bob Hawke for the top job. Robert James Lee Hawke was arguably the best candidate the Labour Party ever fielded for an election. Born in Bordertown, South Australia, Hawke is still currently the closest my state has ever come to a getting a Prime Minister. Studying arbitration in university, Hawke quickly worked his way up the Council of Trade Unions, eventually becoming its president. In 1973, he would be elected president of the Labour Party just as Whitlam took office. This was an excellent position to hold, as it gave Hawke governing experience while shooting him from the Whitlam's government's controversies. Hawke would campaign on bringing Australia together with promises to improve Medicare, increase unemployment benefits and pensions, as well as pass tax cuts for low-income earners. As the election day rolled around, Hawke looked to have the election in the bag, with polls overwhelmingly showing a Labour victory. Fraser would try to put on a brave face, claiming that he was looking forward to knocking off two Labour leaders in a row, and he would confidently go into the 1983 election. And the winner was Bob Hawke and Labour with 75 seats, a gain of 24, along with 53% of the popular vote. This was Labour's biggest win since the 40s, vastly dwarfing their grand win in 1972. 
Labour had also increased their Senate majority to 30, giving them, for the first time since the 40s, the lion's share of the Senators, compared with the Coalition. However, they still had to contend with the Democrats who continued to hold the balance of power. Malcolm Fraser's ploy to call an early election had backfired spectacularly, with the Coalition winning a mere 50 seats and just under 47% of the vote. Despite being quite the emotionless man, Fraser was reported to have teared up when giving his concession speech acknowledging the end of his time as Australia's second longest serving Prime Minister. As Labour sweeped out seats in state after state, Tasmania would buck the trend, re-electing all five of its Liberal candidates with increased margins. This was due to the Franklin Dam project to build a large hydroelectric power station on the Gordon River in southwest Tasmania. This project was somewhat popular with Tasmanians, who hoped it would bring jobs and productivity to the island. Meanwhile, conservationists were concerned the impact the dam would have on a largely untouched ecosystem of southwest Tasmania. The conservationists were led by environmentalist Bob Brown, who would lead a large protest in the streets of Hobart to oppose the construction. These protests gained a sizeable following on the mainland, which Hawke capitalised on to gain large swings, mainly in Victoria. However, it cost him Tasmania. Following the election, a fierce legal battle would ensue between Hawke and Tasmanian Liberal Premier Robin Gray, which would see the High Court get involved. The High Court would eventually side with Hawke and the federal government, giving them the power to protect heritage sites from state construction projects. The result of this battle would see Tasmania remain a strong Liberal supporting state until the end of the decade, and Labour would perform terribly there in both federal and state elections. However, Labour would also find a new ally in the state as well, in the form of Bob Brown, who would enter Tasmanian state parliament in 1983. Brown would soon be joined by several other environmentalists in the state parliament, and together they would form a new left wing political party built around environmentalists. But that's a topic for a later video. Come back next time for the election of 1984.